paper like this. You need paper like me so you can point your f***ing fingers. I say that's the bad guy. That's the bad guy. Okay, we'll start with this. Rhiannon Dixon says, I think it will be my coming out party. I feel like if I win this fight and look good doing it, it will lead me on to massive things. She's got the Katharina Thanders fight coming up on the undercard of J.O. Pattaya versus Jordan Thompson later on this month. Next week. Training has been really good, Dixon told me, over Zoom just a few minutes removed from her last training session. We thought we were fighting in July, and now we're fighting at the end of September. But it's just been a massive amount of time to learn, learn and get learn, fit learn. and not worry about making weight. I have been around fight weight for a while, so I've been able to focus on learning, which has been good for this camp. The case of Rhiannon Dixon can best be described as a case of right place, right time, and right promotional outfit. She's with the right people. I don't think it was ever Rhiannon Dixon's aim, her game, to corner a Katie Taylor fight, even though she campaigns at the same weight as Katie Taylor. They're in very different places in their careers, and the inconvenient truth that Katie's not going to be around forever. She loses her next fight, she might retire. I think every fight feels more important because my career is about progression. So from Christy Shergold to Vicky Wilkinson and even Majuba Uptil in Bilbao, I have to overcome different things. Even though I was the home fighter in Spain, I did feel like the away fighter. Obviously, with Christine, it was doing eight rounds, and then with Vicky, it was for the Commonwealth title. I feel every fight is getting more important, and this is the next step in that progression. It was the Majuba Uptil fight in Spain that really sold me on Rhiannon Dixon, who I like to call right hook Rhiannon. He's got a great right hook fighting out of the southpaw stance. It was the fight in Bilbao, Spain, with Majuba Uptil, who has more of an amateur background than Rhiannon does. That sold me. You could argue that while Rhiannon Dixon was the house fighter, the matchroom fighter, she was being treated like the away fighter by the referee, who for me and my money was over officiating in that fight. She, she being Katarina Thanders, is the best opponent I will have fought, Dixon told Fight Post. But like I always say, the better the dance partner, the better it brings out in you. I have stepped my training up massively. I have been sparring with some unbelievable sparring partners, like Michaela Mayer, Hannah Rankin, and Hannah Robinson, the type of quality sparring that can't fail to bring rewards. Dixon had no amateur experience when she launched her boxing journey. A handful of fights on the white collar scene. Owens has now developed into Dixon being labeled one of the best prospects in the sport. That pro debut in 2019 was one of my nerves, and Dixon remembers it well. I remember someone saying, I have never seen someone looking so out of place. Well, it is true. Rhiannon Dixon has a very unassuming demeanor. You'd never know that she was the vicious fighter that she is. You wouldn't. The vicious southpaw, the speedster, to look at her. I remember someone saying, I have never seen someone looking so out of place walking to the ring. They think I am shitting myself. I'm not. I'm just shy around the camera. But when the bell rings, everything changes because you don't notice anything else and you are just focused on one thing. I look back on my debut and I wish I would have enjoyed it more. But I am going off of that now. I'm going to enjoy it now because I will never get this time back. I've had the privilege of speaking to Rhiannon Dixon at least once here on the channel. Quirky sense of humor unassuming you'd never know she's as capable a fighter as she is she can fight and i see a champion in rhiannon dixon who continued i've gone from white collar to this it's getting serious now but i'm excited about it though dixon says knowing the level she is heading towards i think it will be my coming out party i feel like if i win this fight and look good doing it it will lead me on to massive things i'll be fighting next in december then we will see what happens the following year all the belts are tied up with all these super fights but 
I don't mind having all these learning fights and getting my experience that way. I'm not looking past Katharina because she is a good fighter, so I am just going to concentrate on her for now. I'm doing every single thing I can to win this fight. Ben on Dixon fought three times last year, and this will be her second fight this year. If she makes it through it, she means to return in December, capping off the year with three fights, just like last year. I feel as though I am getting older and further along in my career. The nerves are not there as much because I'm not just enjoying it. And with me, because I don't have that amateur background, there are no expectations with me. People who have been on Team GB are expected to become world champions, and there is a lot of pressure on them. But with me, I'm just taking each fight and each opportunity as it comes. I see a champion in this fighter. The inconvenient truth. That Katie Taylor may lose her rematch to Chantel Cameron, and if she does, she may retire, she may vacate all the titles she currently holds at lightweight, and the silver lining for Rhiannon that she may be able to pick one up. She's in the right place at the right time with the right people. She is. I think she's gonna beat Katharina Thanders. I think Rhiannon is a younger, fresher, faster fighter than Katharina, though Katharina is experienced and durable. But I don't think she's got the same ceiling as Rhiannon Dixon, even though Rhiannon don't come from some deep amateur background she's got ability she's a natural so long as she stays the course she can see herself become a world champion beyond that things are going to get difficult carolyn dubois amateur standout carolyn dubois has already taken an interest in fighting Rhiannon, though they are separated by promotional platform politics it's a fight for the future not now perhaps after they've both become world champions at lightweight or some other weight you could do a fight between them men's heavyweight news the boys are all weighed in and apparently joe joyce weighs in at a career high 281.2 pounds for the zhang rematch zhang weighed in at 287 seven, so there's seven, not that seven, much seven, between them in terms of weight i mean what's seven pounds to a heavyweight not a lot london's joyce came in at a whopping 25.2 pounds heavier for their rematch than he weighed for their first fight five months ago the six foot six joyce stepped on the british boxing board of control scale at a career high 281 pounds the former wbo interim champion officially weighed 256 pounds for their first fight which joyce lost oh. by sixth round technical knockout april 15th at the copper box arena in london there were a lot of rumors that joe would try to come in heavier for this fight and it appears that the rumors were true the virtue of coming in that much more heavier for the second fight is more weight behind the shots more weight behind the punches in order to do damage more damage maybe joe and ishmael salas felt there wasn't enough behind joe's shots to get zhang out of there in a timely fashion they mean to do so now with a heavier in theory more durable joe joyce in theory so joe came in at a career high weight but then again so did zhang china's zhang officially weighed in a career high 287 pounds on friday nine more than the 278 pounds that the six foot six chinese southpaw weighed for his upset victory versus joyce zhang is 40 years old whereas joe he's 38 once again there's not that much between them not in terms of height not in terms of weight not in terms of age i mean even the odds makers have this fight at close to even money why maybe it's because they know that even though joe joyce lost the first fight he got banged up real bad bad it's not like bad, he's had bad, that much time for the eye to heal on the other side of the spectrum if he can make it past the midway point of the fight the sixth round he can perhaps take zhang into deep waters and drown him zhang doesn't have a good engine joe means to correct all the flaws from the first fight saying the loss to zhang exposed a lot of mistakes that me and the team made in the camp Drinking their own Kool-Aid might have been one of them. He knocked out Joseph Parker in impressive fashion. And he made himself a lot of fans with that. But it's a mistake to think that you're going to plow through everybody the same way you plowed through Joseph Parker when Joe's one of the more polite heavyweights in the entire weight class. He ain't Zang. He can't hit like Zang. It exposed a lot of mistakes that me and the team made in the camp. Joyce said during a press conference Thursday in London, and it's about like correcting those and, you know, going to the next fight, not overlooking Zhang, but need to get those things right. And it kind of exposed them and like made me have to deal with them and really focus and get more dedicated on what I'm doing and really just improving to come back stronger and grab that title back. WBO interim title. Can he do it? Pressure guys like Joe 
don't change much from one fight to the next. All that really changes is who they're fighting, not how they're fighting. I mean, if history is any indicator of things to come, that's how these things usually go. Guys like Joe. Pressure guys don't usually make adjustments. Nothing not is impossible. Nothing is outside of the realm of possibility. However, some things are more likely than not. And pressure guys like Joe, they're not known for making adjustments. Joe says he's made some small ones. Well, it's just like small changes, Joyce said. You know, a lot of small changes make a big difference. And that's what we've done. You gotta protect that eye. Yes, too, because after only five months, given the damage it sustained, I'm not fully convinced it healed. And neither is veteran fighter Derek Chisoria. He's got to protect that eye at least in the early goings of the match so that he can make it to the tail end where Zhang might be a little bit more depleted and tired. One of Joe Joyce's strengths is that he's got great cardio. And Zhang doesn't. You know, it's the opposite for Zhang. Where Joe has to try to drag this fight out into the later rounds, Zhang has to kill him quick. Try to. He's got to finish it early. Sean George. Zhang's trainer. He said, I still don't trust the judging, the referee. The only option is for Zile Zhang to win by knockout. He's got some adjustments of his own that he needs to make. Follow up on that counter left hand. See if you can't land a big right hook behind it to seal the deal and take him out. He has to. Zhang's trainer has urged the Chinese Southpaw to do everything in his power to stop Joyce inside the distance again. George doesn't think that Zhang will be treated fairly on the scorecards in Joyce's hometown if their second bout lasts all 12 rounds. Me personally, I still don't trust the judging, and I still don't trust the referee. George told BoxingScene.com. Nor should they. I have an issue with it because the last time one of the judges had Zile Zhang losing the fight, and two others only had him winning by one round, by one point. To me, our only option here is for Zile to win by knockout. So every single round, we're going to be looking for a knockout, be it early or late. We're looking for a knockout coming into this fight. As the fight approaches hour by hour going into tomorrow, the fight is tougher to call. It's tougher to edge. Joe's got good cardio. If he can survive the early rounds, he can outlast Zile Zhang. Though he did come in heavier, and while the virtue of coming in heavier is more weight behind the punch, it also means slower feet. Doesn't actually do anything for his punch resistance coming in heavier implies that joe joyce once again plans on taking it to zile zang taking it to him is what got you counted to death the first time i don't think we have any other choice but to knock joe joyce out because i don't think it's gonna be fair said george a retired light heavyweight contender frank warren said it himself that he wants everything in joe joyce's favor he said it in the first press conference to announce the fight if joe's still standing at the end of this thing don't expect zile zang to get a fair shake his other heavyweight stallion just lost in poland to Oleksandr Yusek. Wants to get at least one of these guys back in the winner's bracket. Just don't know. Joe Joyce has been an offensive whirlwind since his amateur days. With all the same deficiencies, the guy doesn't move his head. He's gonna start now at 38. And this added weight. I don't think he's coming in 25 pounds heavier because he plans on gliding around the ring moving lateral. No. no it looks no, like he no, plans no. on taking it to Zile Zhang once again. He just wants more weight behind the punches this time to do more damage. Which could get him counted to death again. My thoughts. There is a chance that Joe Joyce can win this fight. He just has to last the first couple of rounds. Get Zile Zhang to punch himself out, tire himself out. If he can get him into the later rounds, he can win the fight. At the same time, if Zile Zhang follows up on that counter left that he kept landing, landing at will in the first fight, if he follows that counter left with a right hook, he can finish. He can finish Joe Joyce. Finish the job. I think either guy can hurt either guy. I think either guy can knock either guy out. The idea that Joe's going to be that much more heavy ahead of the second fight, isn't that just going to slow him down? Won't that make him even slower than he was in the first fight? While he's opening up the land punches to take it to Zile Zhang. Pressure, guys. They just don't change much from one fight to the next. How much can Joe change at 38? How much can Zhang take at 40? I'm going to go with Zile Zhang. I'm going to go with Zile Zilei Zhang tenuously. I'm gonna go with Zhang with the understanding that Joe might be able to turn things around if he outlasts Zhang. If he can make it past the first couple of rounds unscathed, he could take him out later on. Though if he's coming in 25 pounds heavier, once again, it's not because he's planning on 
gliding around the ring on the defensive, he means to open up just like he did before. Five months ago. I don't think that eye is fully healed. Team Zeng seemed to understand that they need to take this out of the judges' hands. They know they can hurt Joe. And they have that to build on. So I'm going to go with Zhang, but I'm going with Zhang with the understanding that Joe could turn it around as well. It's close, it's tight, but I'm going with Zhang. Finally, rumors abound. Boxing insider Rick Glacier says, printed nowhere yet. A decision has been rendered by Paramount Global, the parent company of Showtime, and there will be no Showtime boxing after this year on cable or streaming. If there is any boxing at all by Showtime, it'll be exclusively for pay-per-view distribution. Don't shoot the messenger. This was still happening in the background. In spite of the success of Davis versus Garcia and Spence versus Crawford and perhaps the anticipated success of Canelo versus Charlo, this was still happening in the background. Paramount Global's decision moving forward. Do they cut boxing on Showtime? They're just rumors. Along with these rumors, there are still rumors of a Benavidez versus Andre fight. Then again, those rumors seem to indicate that's going to be a pay-per-view. And you will notice that most of what you're getting from Showtime is behind a paywall. Most of it. It's pay-per-views. How many have they staged this year already? Where is the boxing budget? You can argue that Davis versus Garcia was a bona fide pay-per-view, and it was, and so was Spence versus Crawford. But what about fights like Davis versus Hector Luis Garcia or Benavidez versus Plant? Did that? really belong on pay-per-view? Does Benavidez versus Andre? These are just rumors. They should be treated as such until more information is made available, concrete information. Though you will notice that we're already in September and most of September is all but done. And Showtime has yet to roll out a comprehensive fall schedule the way they used to yeah. in better times. That's not worthy. I mean, September is all but done, leaving only October, November, and December. Where's the fall schedule? There's still a lot of mouths to feed over there on PBC Island, but a good number of them are missing in action. Danny Garcia himself said his fight with Lara got pushed back. Keith Thurman doesn't have a fight, not even a tentative fight, date or a dance partner. That's why he's entertaining an exhibition match with Clarissa Shields. And what's the ETA on Jermall Charlo's return. What is that supposed to go down? What about Deontay Wilder? What about Andy Ruiz? David Morrell. The proliferation of pay-per-views that you've been seeing may be due to the budget, the annual budget being cut. So much so that the only way to get these guys fights is to put them on pay-per-view, hoping that the money will come from me and you, the money to pay for these shows. They're subsidizing fights now? As stated, some fights belong on pay-per-view, like Davis versus Garcia, Ryan Garcia, but not Hector. Crawford and Spence, but not Benavidez and Plant. Could this have been avoided? Well, perhaps a bit more bipartisanship and attention to detail, attention to what the fans want, the market that you actually cater to. Been talking a lot about how big a year the PBC is having, but is it a day late and a dollar short? Is it too little and too late? The rumor mill seems to indicate it could be, and word travels fast. I don't know Heyman's gonna go. Word round the campfire is he's in the market for a streaming partner, a streaming platform that if Showtime really is all but done with boxing, all those fighters are gonna need a home. They're gonna need somewhere to fight, someone to air their fights. The zone? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We're not there yet. We won't really have an answer to these questions until this year is out. Canelo's got a three-fight deal with these people. And perhaps they will still air his pay-per-views on Showtime. We don't really know how this Breaks down. Gotta wait.